All right, so we are rolling. So um, today we are going to be covering the uh, monthly report bundle and the payroll report bundle in that um, in the context of those ones that were added to replace monthly CD and payroll CD. So I'm going to get started with talking about the monthly report bundle and then about halfway through I'll turn it over to Lori so that she can talk about the payroll side. As always, I'm going to our wiki first. Um, I do like to just show out here where you're going to uh, see those recordings. Um, and you know what, of course I clicked on the wrong spot. <laughs> Um, under the, re the um, state software redesign page, this Fridays with Fiscal, we have this whole chart here where, where we will be posting um, the link after the meeting. Um, so again, you know, if there is anybody that uh, couldn't make it today, or even if you want to go back and watch this process that we show again, um, we'll get that posted out here along with all of our other previous Fridays with Fiscal. So let's get rolling right into the software here. And I'm going to hop into the report page and report bundles. Now, when the monthly CD reports bundle was added, this is automatically going to show in this grid for all of your districts, along with any other report bundles that your districts may have um, added out here as well, so they're custom bundles. There are a couple options as far as access to um, this report bundle. You can view it to see the setup on here. And then there is an option to disable it. We talked a little bit about when that may be used at our calendar year meeting, and I will recap, um, but it has come up lately as far as who can access that disable box. So. That uh, disable is currently available for users with administrative access and system manager access. We do have a request to update the USAS manager to include that in the future. So our programmers are working on uh, scheduling that as an update. But right now, admin and system manager. Um, hoping that that won't necessarily need to be disabled that often, it should kind of be um, exception situations potentially, so if only the IPC uh, users have admin, um, then that may be something that you need to assist with for the time being. Now, what that setup has is, uh, there's actually 26 reports included in here now. <laughs> there you go, Juan. <laughs> getting a little bit of feedback. I think we're good. Okay, so um, there are 26 reports in there now, and um, we started with 24. We currently, or we recently added the outstanding purchase order and outstanding disbursement reports to the bundle. Um, that will automatically be set to run when the posting period is closed for the month. So as they go through their month end process, they click to close that period and this will generate. I figured I would go ahead and uh, give a side note at this point since I have it in my grid, but we are working on a calendar year-end reports bundle. This came up at our prioritization meeting. It was suggested that we put something out there um, where they can have a set of reports that is run for the date, so like the transaction reports basically, a financial detail, a budget activity report that would include all of the transactions for the calendar year. Um, I think some IPCs were considering making that for them, their districts themselves, uh, but if you are able to hold off, um, what this report or what this bundle would do is it would automatically, uh, once, we're, once we add it, it would automatically be in all of the instances. So that would save you the work of having to create it for each instance and um, it is written in with the dates for 2019. So we're trying to get it out in December, uh, but even if it comes out in January, it can be run retroactively to save those reports for this calendar year. Um, and then we're working on adding one for the future too that would be um, something that can be used every year. So this one may be 
a little bit unique in how it runs this year. But uh, once we actually push that out, I'm sure we'll have documentation um, and notes on, you know, how to run that. So once the monthly um, CD reports run, uh, the next thing that happens is uh, as soon as that period is closed, it's going to show it in the job scheduler. So any uh, users that have access to the job scheduler, uh, like I believe that's going to be your admin users as well, could hop in here and see it when it's running. So I have a recent one in here. This status would just show, you know, running, and you could keep an eye on it. And once it's done, it'll say completed. And after it finishes, it's going to go to the file archive. So kind of briefing over that job scheduler step because you don't necessarily need to have that. It's nice if you do, um, you know, some users could keep an eye on it, but really what uh, your district users are probably going to take a look at is in this file archive, they can click right on that month. And as these reports generate, this list is going to grow. So if they come in here immediately after closing their period, uh, they may have one or two. They could come back. And then once the whole list is complete, they know it's all set. Um, just to recap a couple points from the calendar year end meeting that we talked about is, you know, this, uh, when this bundle runs, when the posting period is closed, it is creating those six, uh, 20, sorry, 26 reports sequentially, um, and it's actually running them, you know, as, on that job scheduler in the background. So that is some work on the system. Uh, so we do recommend that they don't immediately jump into heavy processing, uh, like if they were to go immediately run, um, or post a large batch of payables or, you know, run a financial detail report for the entire year or just something like that um, that could conflict with the fact that the system is going through and creating these reports, uh, just something to be cautious of um, there. And I know it may be tempting, um, but, you know, right now the monthly CD bundle is intended just to be used going forward. Uh, we have districts that, you know, maybe have a gap from when they were on Classic and then um, started using Redesign and now the monthly bundle came out. So it is not recommended that they go back and like open and reclose prior periods so that they can just get their monthly CD bundle. Uh, we, hope, we do not want them to be doing that. We are working on a way that uh, will generate those reports retroactively for them. So there will be a solution so that they can have those in the future. Um, we just wanted to make sure that the bundle could uh, start being generated. So um, it, it, we wanted to make the current monthly CD report available now, and that will be that'll be coming. So now that we've kind of covered just the basics of how that bundle works. Um, really what I want to show is how do I add additional reports? You know, I have those 26 regular ones, but this specific district also wants to run, you know, would they want to save these three reports in addition or something like that. They want to set up their own custom reports to be partnered with that monthly CD bundle. We're going to hop to the wiki because I did, um, we did recently put an appendix page out here. I just completed this like yesterday, so it's brand new. Um, I'm going to the appendix in USAC. And there's one out here for scheduling a custom monthly report bundle. We're going to walk through an example of this um, and take a look at it, but this does go through all of the steps here. So if this is something that um, you want to save or print out um, to go through this process, I wanted to make sure it was all documented.
All right, so we're back on our report bundle manager page. I'm gonna just start off by creating a new bundle. And we'll give that report bundle a name. Actually just gonna use my examples from the walkthrough to make this easy here. Let's say additional monthly reports and I had an example description that kind of matched what the monthly bundle said. So it looks nice in this grid here. And once we get that information in, um, we would use this drop down right here to select what reports we want to add. So just to make this easy, I'm just going to add a financial detail report. Um, once I select this, then I would be able to select from the grid and add this here. I need to modify the parameters. So I already have a normal financial detail for the month in my regular bundle. Um, maybe I want one that is specific to um, a certain fund. So I'll make this for the general fund. I can generate it on the fly just to see what that would look like, um, you know, or I can continue to save this. One thing that I did note in the walkthrough um, but something to remember is these start and end dates, when we're doing this specific process where we are going to tie this to the month and close, those start, date, start and end dates are going to default when it runs to be for the period that's closing. So um, if we're doing this process, and you don't need to enter start and end dates. Um, or like if you're trying to expand and have this for a longer time, you may need to run this differently. Um, we're gonna talk about another option um, before we wrap up. But for this specific one, just keep that in mind, the start and end dates um, are going to be taken care of based on the event, based on the posting period we're closing. So um, I'm gonna save that up. And then um, we can go ahead and save this report bundle. And I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything because we are set to go with that. So then we want to schedule it. So I'll come over here and select the um, schedule icon. And when we do this, so we also want to base this on an event. Um, we can, we'll basically choose the same event that the monthly CD report runs on. which is this posting period close completed event. Um, this is kind of why I wanted to make that separate walkthrough too as to how to do this because it specifically says in the walkthrough, here's the event you pick and then send output to, that's also going to be a specific path that will send it to the file archive. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that right from the walkthrough. And basically this just tells it it says the event fiscal year and the event month. So when the posting period is closed, it's gonna to send to the file archive based on what month I'm closing. And for archive type, I'm gonna do single notification with multiple attachments. And when you're done, you save that up. And the um, bundle is enabled, it's scheduled. So now the next time that we close a period, and you know, I think I'm gonna go ahead and close a period so we can look at it in the job scheduler, but we're not gonna wait for everything to actually finish here. Or we may be able to see it. We're gonna go back into the report bundle, um, look at that additionally, so we'll see. See how it goes, kind of winging it. Um, so I have November open. I'm gonna go ahead and close November. And if I come to our job scheduler, I can see running. I have my monthly CD report, so that is running. And then additional monthly reports as well. It looks like that one actually already ran.
And so let's go to our file archive. I see I have November here. And then it's it completed my additional reports, which was my financial detail. And then it's starting my monthly report. So I have my app, some, my appropriation summary <laughs> out there. And these will continue to grow as that runs. Now, the other cool thing that you can do, um, if we're scheduling it on that event, you know, that specific pass that sends to the file archive that we pasted in, you know, that's going to make, that's going to have it so, okay, they have their um, group of reports together in the file archive. Um, but you could also schedule bundles so that they email when the period is closed. I know this is a little repetitive to look at going through again, but I feel like it's kind of um, nice to see. So um, the example I was thinking about is when the district closes the month, like they probably run a bunch of reports for balancing. Um, you know, maybe they were running a budget summary this way, that way, looking at specific funds. But in classic, they had that all sum uh, where some of them would just run that one program and they'd get their uh, bud sum, app sum, rev sum. So maybe, Maybe they just want a clean copy emailed to them when they close the month. And then that way they know that they have it saved. Uh, and I don't have to add a description, so I'm going to skip that part. So let's add an appropriation summary. Budget summary. And you can see I have uh, my custom reports pop up in here, my SSPT standard templates. So um, you can really use any um, of the reports that you've created. I'm kind of just sticking to our standard template reports for examples. But um, you know, if there is something maybe that they've created for a specific um, department or advisor that they want to be sent out at the end of each month, um, instead of using a cron job where, you know, that they may or may not be closed, they could um, choose, like, say, an art club or something like that. So I know the cash summary wasn't in the all sum, but we're going to add that anyway. Okay. So we have our reports. We're going to save this up. And now when I go to schedule this one, I'm still going to base it on that same event. So it'll be triggered the same time as my other report bundles. But what I would do is send my output to an email address. And then select my archive type. And so if I do this now, um, so say your treasurer, they're closing the period, their monthly reports go off to that file archive. Um, but they also get that clean, fresh copy of all of their summary reports right to their email, and then they can save those off to a folder if that's what they do, um, instead of having to make sure to go in and that they run the final copy again um, before that. So just kind of like a little trick to make it easy. Um, you know, or if they want to have five different bundles set up so that every time they close a month, that updated financial detail report is going to each one of their departments so they can see where they're at for the end of that month. We'll save that up. And um, any report bundles that you are creating, uh, so all of these, like I'm under my admin username, you know, I can disable these. So uh, see I have my additional monthly reports, if I go back and view this, it is set up to run on that posting period close. So if I wanted that to not no longer run with my posting period close, I would be able to disable that um, as my user because I created it. So that won't, won't go by the same um, necessarily as this monthly bundle. So if you have a USAS manager that's creating them, they will be able to do that. And of course, they can delete the bundle as well if they no longer want it in there. Okay. 
the last thing that I want to talk about is um, I don't know how often this would be used, but I, I just want to make a note. I documented this is um, sending reports on demand to the file archive. Uh, so I mentioned that when you're sending with the posting period closed, it's got to run for the start and stop dates that are for that specific posting period. So, you know, what if you want to run reports, you know, run a report that does show for the whole year or something like that? Um, there is a way that when we create this bundle, let's see, I'm going to go in here and um, just modify my options. So, say for this one, I'm going to send, I'm going to generate these right now. Um, and I want it to be stored with my, um, my ran November with my November reports in the file archive. When I run this, uh, the one thing I'm going to have to be cautious of here is my current period. If I'm running it immediate, it will run based on now, um, based on my current period. So, if you're using this option, you may want to modify your report parameters to have. Um, a specific as of period parameter, um, or you may want to change your current period if this is something where they're trying to, you know, get reports into a prior period that they wanted saved. Um, so that is going to be a little bit tricky if you're doing this because it's going to run the current ones. But let me go back to the wiki before we do this. Go into the USSR documentation, and this time I'm just going to go to my report bundles page, so my regular report bundles documentation. Um, and I'm working on scheduling a report bundle, so I'm going to jump to that section. And this is our send output, too. So, you know, a lot of times when you're doing immediate, you are sending it to an email address, but there is a section down here now if I want to send it to the file archive. Um, this has also the link for sending it to the monthly file archive, so that's what we talked about with our previous example. Um, but if I wanted to send it, you know, say I want to send some reports, this example is for December. Then this little path is broken down into a couple different sections. It's always going to start with this file info. And then depending on if you're sending it to a tab for the monthly file archive or the fiscal file archive, because there's those two tabs in the file archive page. And for monthly, it's going to be your fiscal year and then your period which the period runs 1 through 12 starting in uh, July. So that part's a little bit tricky, but I made sure to put examples in here. Um, so say, let me copy this. So this is December. So I, I, I lied. I said we were going to do an example for November. But we're going to do December because we're actually in December, but we're only partway through the month. So maybe I want to save a copy of my account summary reports for December 6th and have those in my monthly archive. Um, if I was actually doing this, I might modify my uh, report titles that are going to run just so it doesn't get too confusing. Um, but I could go ahead and then save this and it would immediately generate this bundle and it would send it to the file archive for the month that I specified in my path. Probably not going to save this just because I didn't check to see if my other bundles were complete and I don't want to go too crazy on it. But that could be a handy option. Again, I don't know that you'll be using that all the time, but if you need it, I just kind of wanted to go over how that would work because uh, it's, you know, you have to put the right, the right path, the right numbers, and that sort of thing in there. Yeah, we look complete here. 
Okay, so um, that is about it for what I wanted to show on the UCES side. Do you guys have questions? Buy a bunch today. All right. Well, I think we're about ready to switch over to the payroll side then. Lori, you want to take it? Sure. All righty. Uh, let's see. So what we're going to talk about on the payroll side of things is um, there are um, tw about 22 um, bundles out there that are basically triggered by an event. So example, like the, the posting of the payroll, uh, when, when outstanding payables is processed, when the direct deposit tape file is created. So Amanda, if you go out to the um, USPS documentation, we will go ahead and show them where that is at. And this head, there's a chart out there that explains like what reports get created and what triggers those reports to get created. Yeah, go ahead and go to report bundles. And then if you click on this link right here where it says file archive, payroll archive report bundles, right under automatically generated report bundles, go down a little bit and then there's a link there. If you click on that, there you go. Yep, that's it. So basically, if you click on this, it's going to give you a, a chart that shows all of the different categories, the different reports that are created, as well as what triggers those reports to be created. Um, you can see that we have a calendar year end reports, fiscal year end, quarter year end. We have a leave projection monthly reports that are processed, ODGFS reporting, we have retirement reports, um, the payee payments, detail reports. So there's a lot of different reports out there. Like I said, we have 22 different events that um, can process and then all of these different reports are saved. So you can see where it says reports saved and submission files. Those are the reports that actually get copied out to the payroll archive. So this is a really nice, uh, uh, chart that tells you all that and you can actually pr uh, create a printable version and print it off by clicking on that link up above and it'll actually allow you to print that off then. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about the report bundle itself. So let's go back to the report bundle in my, in my, in your instance, my instance, your instance. <laughs> so go ahead and go to the report bundles. And what we're going to do is, um, if you go, if you look, you can see all of those different um, report bundle bundles that are are created. We've created those. Um, go ahead and just go into the uh, the payroll posted report archive, Amanda. So it's kind of down towards the middle, and you can see all we have is a view option, and then there's an enable or disable option. So if you look at this, you can see all of those reports are sitting out there that will be processed when the event, which is the posting of the payroll complete, is, is, um, has been completed. When, that, when the payroll is completed, this is going to actually post all of these reports. There's five reports that get posted out to the payroll CD. Now, if for some reason you didn't want a report, go ahead and exit back out of that, Amanda. If you didn't want any of these reports at all, you want to create your own report bundles to have it fire on the event of the, po the payroll posting, you could disable this by just going in where this, uh, these check boxes are at. You could just go in and, and uncheck it, and then that will disable all of those reports. You, none of them will process out when you post the payroll. Go ahead and, and re-enable that, Amanda, if you would. Um, one thing to keep in mind, if you can go back into the view, Amanda, on that report, um, like Amanda had shown with the USAS reports, we have the send to address is actually like where the files are going to go, which is the payroll archive account. So when, if I, if I wanted to, I can actually go in and create additional reports, you know, reports of my own. Maybe I have like a Benelogic report that I created 
that I want to have included. I want that to process when the payroll uh, posting has been completed. I could go in and actually do that by, I can copy this uh, send to address, I can copy that. And then what I can do is go in and do a create under the report bundles manager option. So I'm gonna go ahead and give my report bundle a name. So whatever you wanna call it, Amanda, new report, there you go. And then you could put a description, you know, my, the report that I want, the reports I want out there, whatever. And then you're gonna go to the select report to add. So you can go ahead and use the drop down and let's just, used, yeah, that's good. And then, um, yeah, and then we're gonna go ahead and choose which report because there's three different options. You just choose the one you want by clicking on the plus button. It'll put that down there on, under the reports currently in the bundle option. Here we can edit, just like Amanda had showed you with the other one with the use as report. So you could edit it if you wanted to, you know, maybe you have certain uh, dates you wanted to run, you know, run by the month or the period or whatever you wanna do. You could set that up and then go ahead and you could save this, save this bundle. So go ahead and save. We're loading the parameters still. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay, no problem. I was gonna say, I didn't think I saw it open up. There we go. Yeah, this one doesn't have dates, but yeah, there you go. And then we'll just save that one, okay? So now what we can do is we can schedule this report. So if we go out into that new reports for payroll and go to that little icon that looks like a little circle, like a, I don't know if it's a clock maybe, we can set that up to trigger when the payroll uh, posts. So we could choose the event and then you can choose from the drop down. There's all the different event options. And so we wanted to choose the pay, uh, payroll posted I think it's complete. Yeah, that one right there. And then that we can send the output. We could email it to ourselves if we wanted to. What Amanda just said, you're fine, Amanda. That's good because I was gonna talk about that next. Because we copied that address where all of the other um, bundle, bundled reports are going to be going to the, fi the file archive, we basically could include that here to this send output to. So what'll happen is when the payroll pose, that triggers the payroll bundles, all those reports in the payroll bundle, as well as, as this report to process out to the payroll archive or the file archive. And then we can just choose the archive type. You could just choose the multiple and save it. So then what we've done is we've created a bundle for, it basically is like um, to include with those all, of, all those other bundles that are already being processed when the, the payroll post event happens. Um, again, if you, go, if you went out to the, uh, the uh, utilities job scheduler, you'll see that job Oh, nope, it's not there. Payroll though. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but what what would ha what would happen is if I actually ran through and I put, I went through and processed the payroll and I actually posted that payroll, I would see the job under this job scheduler for that the the the, the job that I created that report bundle for. I would see that sitting out here. And normally the status when it first goes out there, it will say like unknown and then if you hit the refresh button a few different times, finally it should say completed. And then once it completes, you should be able to go out um, under the utility, the file archive, and you should be able to see under the per pay reports, yeah, just go ahead and click on, there you go. 
and you should be able to still see all of the different reports that are out there. And um, if I wanted to see like everything that was processed, you know, with the timestamp of today's date, okay, I could just, yeah, I could, I could go up and I could uh, sort or filter it just by clicking on the timestamp. You know, I could do ascending, descending, however I want to do it. And then all of my reports should be out there from that payroll process because the payroll completed. So all of my, all of my bundles that were sitting out there for uh, payroll processing completed as well as the, the bundle I created would be, would be included out here in the file archive. Again, same thing holds true if you had calendar year-end reports, fiscal year-end, month-end, anything. Those would all be out there. Um, since we're not in my directory. Amanda doesn't have a lot of the the uh, the directories like calendar year and fiscal year. And if mine was pulled up, it would, but but it doesn't. So um, one other thing I wanted to talk about too, um, you do have the capability of going in, and uh, I know this is used a lot for like the InfoHio report. You have the capability of actually FTPing the report to like a directory or a subdirectory if you wanted to, or you could use like an HTTP um, uh, setup. Um, you can actually do that using an FTP setup or an HTTP setup. Um, we don't have those uh, strings or that, that setup out in our documentation. We will get that out there. We've been working on that. Um, but like the FTP option is like uh, FTP colon slash 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 slash. Then it's like your username, a colon, the password for your that directory or subdirectory that you're putting it in, and then add, and then whatever the uh, the directory name is. So um, we will get that out there in the, our documentation soon, so you have that. But I know for Info Ohio, we've had a couple people that have actually already done it. They've used it, and it did work for them. And they set that up as a report bundle. So like maybe every month or whenever they needed that report, they have it set up um, as a cron job to run every month or every you know half a month or whatever they're doing. You could set that up to process um, and go to a directory or wherever you prefer for it to go to, or like I said, email it directly. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about too is um, if you're going to be using the um, the archives, the file archives, and creating report bundles and and FTPing them out, emailing them out, you want to make sure if you go to system. So go ahead and go to system, Amanda, and then go to the configuration screen. You're going to want to make sure that the, uh, which one is it? The application configuration is set. You want to make sure that the external notification is enabled as well as the user job execution is enabled. So you just got to make sure that those are turned on. Um, when you're using this. And also, um, if you go to systems and go to the modules, you're going to want to make sure, um, like I said, if you're uh, using the file archive, you want to make sure the file archive module is turned on. And um, if you're, again, if you're going to use the FTP or FTPS or whatever to send that to a directory, you'll want to go ahead and, and make sure you enable that file transfer notification service. So you want to make sure that that's turned on as well. So to turn it on, you just click the plus button and it'll basically tell you that it has been uh, changed and then if you want to refresh, it should actually were it should uh, be in effect then, and then you'll see you can see that now there's a like a negative sign in front of that. So um, just make sure that when you're you're processing you know report bundles and you're if you're emailing them or if you're FTPing them or if you're sending them out to the file archive that those modules or the configuration is set up correctly before you do that. Um, let's see, I'm trying to see what else I have. 
don't really have anything else. Um, is there any, are there any questions? I mean, I could go over like all the different reports and the events that trigger it, but I'm sure that you don't really want to be uh, saddled down with all of that when you can just easily go out and look at it and print off that document. So are there questions on the, the payroll bundles? Everybody's quiet this morning. <laughs> okay, well, if, if you don't have any questions, I think I'm good. And Amanda, did you have anything else we needed to talk about? No, I think we are all set. Okay, well, thank you everyone for being patient and appreciate it on your end. So have a great weekend. Thank Thanks you. Everyone. Thank you. You're